Ben Whiting with Paddle TV, getting ready to do another little paddling mission. And today what I'm doing, it's a beautiful fall day in the Ottawa Valley. And you know, I tried this kayak here, the PH Volan. Um, beautiful sea kayak, composite, only 42 pounds, I believe, for a 16 foot sea kayak. It's an all performing sea kayak. It's designed for rough water, for uh, flat water, the works. But when I tested it the first time, I only got to test it in flat water. And so, you know what? I decided I feel like getting on the water. I am going to test this sea kayak in some real rough water. Now, I don't have the sea nearby, but I do have the Ottawa River. And so that's what we're going to hit. Should be a perfect test on a perfect day. Well, I'm at the first rapid already. It's not very far from the put-in, and the Ottawa River starts with a bang. This is McCoy's rapid, and it's got a couple of big, big holes to miss. Uh, paddling it in a, a sea kayak is always interesting because, you know, the thing about sea kayaking in whitewater is you just can't correct your line very easily. Once you've established momentum and you've established your line, then you're kind of that's where you're going <laughs> and so you got to be good with your your setup but that's what makes it fun too it's like kind of more like rafting than it is whitewater kayaking but I, uh, I don't want to be in a raft today I want to be in a sea kayak so here we go one down. It is a whole lot different paddling a boat like this with current that's going every which direction. But it's fun! Alright, made it. That is the longest flat water paddle that I have today. It's about a mile from McCoy's to the Lorne, the second rapid. And uh, it's worth it though, because the Lorne has a nice big wave at the top called Garburator. And then after that, it's got some nice standing waves called the Waikiki waves. It's just gonna be a fun, fun roller coaster, big roller coaster ride. <sighs> Here we go. Oh yeah, Garburator's thumping. I'm going to try to just catch the corner of it, miss most of it. Or not. Maybe I'll go right through it. Yeah, let's go right through it. Woo. That's what I'm talking about. One major learning in that rapid was that when I hit one of the big waves and I did kind of a brace stroke, what I actually ended up doing is I knocked the lever, the, the telescoping, the VersaLock lever that allows the paddle to telescope. And, and so all of a sudden the blades were rotating. I had basically two paddles in my hand. They were loosely connected in the middle. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, <laughs> if I flip now, I am screwed. Uh, and so I just stabilized in the middle of the wave train as much as I could and just uh, squared it off to zeros and snapped it shut and boom, I was okay. And I'm like, how did that happen? And what happened was the clip 
the Versalock caught the edge of my skirt. I, I was just doing a weird bracing stroke and it flipped it open. And so that's a big learning right there. Dealing with, I mean, rough water. I've never had that happen before. And I've been using this, the Versalock all summer long in a variety of conditions, but never in anything this big. And so, you know what? Next time when I'm running big water, I'm gonna use a fixed paddle. That's a good learning. Or what I might even do is just bring a bit of tape uh, on me and to just wrap it around there so I know it's not going to inadvertently pop. <laughs> wow. Woo. Well, I got to catch a little corner of it, don't I? Yes, of course I do. from the ragged rocks. Oh yeah, woohoo! I, uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with whirlpools and these whirlpools specifically uh, you know, sometimes you have to learn lessons the hard way, and this is this was one of those places where I learned a really hard lesson the hard way. As a kid, this was 35 years ago, 30 some years ago, I would jump up with my friends and I, I would jump off the rocks right here into this spot to uh, to get downtime in the whirlpools. And I had a one time I went down way more than I wanted to. It was a it was a life changing moment, but. You know, as, as bad as it was, it was also incredibly valuable. It's something that stuck with me for the rest of my life. And in terms of really learning to respect the power of the river and mother nature and that you can play with it. That's all you're doing. You play with it, you work with it, but ultimately it's in control. Well, we're through the lunch stop waves, and that was fun, as expected. But now, uh, things get a bit more interesting. Down right there, we got Norman's, and then followed immediately by Coliseum, followed pretty much immediately by Dog Le Dog's Leg or Center Slot. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna take. Um, but Norman's and Coliseum are two of the bigger rapids. Normans, everything gets funneled into this mini low-walled canyon and and uh, you get these offset compression waves, pretty good size, and then uh, Coliseum is just kind of chaotic. A lot of big waves and boils and whirlpools and big waves and <laughs> this will be fun.
that's definitely what you would call big. <laughs> that's big for a sea kayak. I almost got spun at the very top. I mean, that's the nature of a sea kayak. I just had a little too much angle. I hit the reactionary and it turned me sideways and I had to really work to get it straight again to go through the meat of the rapid. I did get it around straight again, which is nice. And I, again, it's a testament to this thing's maneuverability. Uh, and then went through some waves, some weird, it's always funny, you never know what to expect. It's very surgy. But when I came over that last hump and I knew, I was like, oh, okay, great. It's surging, it's gonna be a big hole right now. And it was it was pretty big when I went into it. I thought I might be surfing, but uh, but I punched through it, kind of pulled through it, I should probably say. Punch, punch slash pulled. Made it. That's the bottom line. With a smile on my face. So that is a victory. There you have it. Successfully down the Ottawa main channel in the PH Sea Kayaks Bolin 160. Uh, and not just successful, I had a good time. <laughs> uh, what I can tell you, you know, I was doing this mostly for fun, but partly to test this kayak in rough conditions. And what I can tell you is it performed as I, had ex I expected it to. Um, it's a, uh, hey, I mean, it's a sea kayak. So it's not designed to handle all, all the little currents. And it's not supposed to handle like a whitewater kayak, and it doesn't. But it is a maneuverable sea kayak. It has enough rocker to deal with these waves and to be able to use these waves to turn. Um, and just to turn in general, you know, when I had the mile of flat water between McCoy's and the Lorne, I just dropped the skeg and that really made a difference it, this thing tracks like a like an arrow once you drop the skeg um the learning from the boat was uh outfitting um this thing it has it doesn't have aggressive thigh hooks uh, and so it, it's got enough uh support there for my knees that hey i can roll this thing no problem and, and i can deal with edging this kayak and I can handle whatever I need to handle but it could be offer even it could be more comfortable and it could offer more uh, leg control if I just took the time and instead of putting that piece of foam around the knees um, actually contouring the foam and making it a bit more of a hook to something for my leg to grab onto a little bit more and it's probably worth it for me because I'm gonna be running I want to continue to run stuff like this. For most people, just putting foam around the knees, customizing it that way, is probably all you'll ever need to do with this boat. What else can I tell you? That's about it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed shooting it, as I enjoy filming all my videos. And so, as long as, well, you know what? Whether you keep enjoying them or not, I'm probably going to keep filming them. <laughs> but it's nice to know that they are enjoyed. So give it a thumbs up if you do like this one. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And stay tuned because we got lots more paddling tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way. And sometimes a paddling adventure with paddling tips and a gear review.